On this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, it is difficult to do karate in water. Uh, yeah, also it'd be interesting if you knew how to do electricity. That would be interesting. Uh, but the boys, they just, uh, they're just around. In Hollywood, even. Yeah. Once yeah. upon a time. Well, <laughs> if you're going to do that, I mean, they could at least king their, their chief lion, right? Wouldn't that be a thing? If I was running this country. <laughs> And welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 222 for Thursday, the 8th of August, 2019. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests, when we have them, celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we welcome you to the shit show that this is bound to be. Thank you for watching, listening, and or avoiding, whichever is your preference, and we appreciate you all. Hell yeah, man. Uh, Thursday nights are my favorite nights. This is awesome. We are here with the wonderful RMP audience. Uh, couldn't be more excited, dude. Um, I, I look forward to to explaining why I should be the next president of the United States. <laughs> or why you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> and you just missed your teeny audience. Oh, did I? You did. Oh, I'm super sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Benton Central alum will appreciate it. Um <laughs> Hey, dude. Uh, so last week I couldn't be here because uh, electricity is hard. Actually, it's 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 not. It's fairly easy. Um, yeah, but you're. I mean, you're referring to home electricity, right? Yes. And that's that scares me. Home <laughs> electricity is like I'll mess with with automotive electricity. I'll mess with like small electronics electricity. Mm -hmm. Not not house electricity. I, no. uh, see, I, well, I'm used to airplane electricity, so this is like no big deal, but. It's still different. I mean, and it's different enough that it, it's not like just because you understand one type or one one way of producing and utilizing electricity doesn't mean necessarily that you understand them all. And right. um, so I put in some uh, some wireless switches, some some uh, Amazon voice assistant enabled switches. I replaced the fan in my bedroom because it was this old crappy fan. We pulled it down. The wiring was all jacked up and everything else. Like I'm not even trying to fix this junk. I'm just going to throw this shit away. Went out and got basically the cheapest fan they had at Lowe's, but it happened to be that they were having a sale, so the cheapest fan was actually one of the better ones. And installed that with the lights, and then put the Lutron Caseta switches at the recommendation of our good friend Richard Gunther. And installed those with the dimmer, with the blah, 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 hoping it would work, and it worked just fine. And then I went to put mount the switches back into the into the, the junction box, right? Into the, the, the with the gang plate on it and everything. We turned the breaker back on and they didn't work. Hmm. Hmm. So I went and pulled the breaker, you know, turned the breaker back off, went up there and pulled them all out, pulled them all out and everything worked again. Then I went back and put them back in the wall and flipped the breaker and they didn't work. I was like, what the hell? Well, I found a wire that was basically half ass contacting and fixed that and turned the breaker back on and half the house wasn't working. Oh my God. <laughs> That's no, no. <laughs> add, add this to a, the long list of reasons that I don't mess with house electricity. Right. Well, it turns out I'm going to, uh, uh, that's the fun part of the story. The, the long and short of it is, and the reason why I couldn't, the reason why power in my bedroom affected me from being able to stream in my studio is because the dude that installed the, the, the finished the basement. There's a second breaker down here. And mm. something with one of the breakers upstairs, either the one that I was messing with or the one of the two next to it, when I was jiggling it by, you know, hitting the switch, hit, turning it back on and off, it did some movement in there and disconnected the breaker that goes down here. Mm. So basically, I lost half the house. So the, the, you have a daisy chain of circuit breakers. Well, that's how they work. They're all, they're all done in parallel. And then if you have a sub breaker, it's basically done in series to the main with further parallels coming off of it. So if it, anyway, I learned a lot about house electricity last Thursday night and it's all fixed and it only cost me a small fortune. I uh, did all the work myself with them fucking breakers are like 70 bucks a piece and I replaced five of them. So Jesus. <laughs> oh, and not, not to mention, do you know where your house breaker is? 
I do. Yeah. I didn't realize I had a housebreaker until I moved into this house and it was sitting on the side of the house and it's like not even locked or anything. Like anybody can just walk up and turn the power off in any fucking house ever. You just yep. walk up and flip the switch and you're not allowed to lock it. That's the thing that really gets me is because it's a, a safety thing. So like all those movies where they go in, they cut the power to the house. Like they're not actually cutting wires. They're just flipping a goddamn big ass switch on the side of the house over by the cable box. Yep. So what you can do though is is put a um uh oh man I'm having a senior moment I can't think of the word I'm looking for uh, like a tamper a tamper switch a tamper alarm on the box so that if the panel opens you'll yeah. get a notification yeah I mean what I mean, can do what notifications not gonna do you much good if you're not home and the power just <laughs> but I guess nothing's gonna do much good <laughs> yeah but I'm just saying if somebody's been messing with your breaker you'll know about it yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that's uh, so that's why I wasn't here last week, and those were my adventures. It should have been a three-hour job turned into a six-hour excursion. Mm. And at the time I canceled my appearance on the show, I was sitting at the five, four and a half hour mark. Jeez! So I was already pretty frustrated. It wouldn't have been a very good appearance anyway. Yeah. So electricity sucks. We know that. Uh, plumbing also sucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it it does, it does. Unless you're at Richard's house. I when I was there, when I stayed at DC, he's got amazing plumbing in his house. So, I, <laughs> long-time listeners of the show will know that I used to go to a karate dojo. I used right. to be a, a student of karate. Um, I've remain. I've since <laughs> I stopped going to karate a couple of years ago, but I've remained friends with not only my sensei but a lot of people from the school. So it's kind of like part of my clique, I guess. So I've never really been completely separated from that environment. Uh, Saturday, I got a text from my old sensei uh, saying, "Hey, we're gonna have a get together at the house. You know, uh, grill some burgers and whatnot. If you want to come by, uh, come on by." Uh, well, so, well, yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah, that, that might be a thing that happens. And then um, a couple hours later, I get another text like says, uh, never mind, headed to the school. It's flooded. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> what happened? And of course, this happens right as you're deciding, yeah, we should probably do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I, I te- texted him back like, oh, uh, what's going on? So a sometime in the previous, within the previous like, 15 hours or something like that, a water pipe burst in the school and um, it had just been spilling into the building. Uh, Yeah. So a bunch of us showed up at the dojo and had to rip up all kinds of carpet. Uh, There was a bunch of wooden furniture that was destroyed, papers. Drywall. um, it's a mess. Uh, I, so bad. He clo- he actually closed the school for the week to yeah. to just to work on 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 it. It's it's really really bad. So have you ever been, done like Habitat for for Humanity and helped build houses or or been to someone's house and helped them dr- hang drywall or something yes, like that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, okay. I don't think I've done Habitat Habitat for Humanity. I've done things like that, and I've definitely done things in my own house and helped friends with right. With, so. Um, here's the th- and I mentioned drywall when you were talking about the flooding for a very specific reason. I would rather roof a house. I would rather rewire a kitchen. And I just lost your audio, I think. Um, then hang drywall, tear well tearing drywall down. It's pretty fun, but. Hanging drywall or dealing with wet drywall, like flood or like, you know, storm damage drywall. Sure, sure. Hanging it is stupid because you've got to be very exact. Like, it's an art to hang drywall well. Uh, you don't have to be exact. There's some there's some give there. There's some leeway. Sure. but you I mean, Not a lot, but I mean, it's, you know, you don't need to break out like the laser precise instruments and... Right. Well, once you're good at drywall, which I'm not trying to claim to be, you don't have to break those out because you just know the seams and know where the shit goes. It's like it's like it's like it's like a dance that they do with the. Especially if you're watching a dude hang drywall by himself and he just nails it, like pun intended. It's amazing. But if you're trying to tear drywall out that's been soaked, it's basically like fighting putty. It's yeah. It's kind of awful. It's 
uh, and it gets everywhere. And like three months later, you still got drywall coming out of your eyeball, and you're like, "How does that <laughs> fucking work?" Um, oh, fuck. yeah, it's like it reminds me of paper mache, like just how nasty. Yes. Yes. Really yeah, but but the, the drywall is actually made of like the the paper mache stuff, not the paper, but the the stuff, the concoction you put together to make the paper mache possible. The it's gunk. like. Yeah, it's, it's made out of that with like paper on either side. <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, God, it's just shitty. A um, lot of good shit happening this summer as far as the TVs and the movies is go. And you watched The Boys. Everyone uh, else in my f- house watched this. I have not watched it because, well, I suck at life and I've been too busy doing tons of other shit. My um, God. So, Kent, tell us about The Boys, the spoiler-free version. It is fucking amazing. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Dude. It's, okay. It's it's the anti superhero of LA, right? Um well it's it's in New York, not LA, but it's yeah. uh um <sighs> yeah. So it's in a world of like, you know, superheroes are real, but the, we're gonna be like gritty with it. And it's a it's a team, like a kind of a uh yeah, let's just say it's a team of people that are uh, more or less vigilantes against superheroes. And uh, that's that already kind of sounds interesting. Like, OK, let's check this out. But this is the most shocking and gritty. Like, if you're not prepared for what this show is going to bring to you, if you don't know what's going to happen at all, when certain things happen, you will just like, <gasps> Oh my God, did that just fucking happen? That sounds uh, awesome. That was like twice in the first episode for me. And <laughs> it's happened over and over again throughout the run of the series. It's uh, eight episodes, an hour each, and it's already been renewed for season two. I and can't wait. This is a Amazon Prime video thing, right? It is. It is. So is, and, this, is this the grittiest Amazon Prime video has gotten with their original content? Uh, that I've seen. Yeah. I, admittedly I haven't seen a lot of the Amazon prime series, uh, but this one is pretty damn gritty and, uh, it is based on a comic book. So I downloaded all of the comic books, which are free on Amazon prime for Kindle. Mm. So, um, pretty great. I bought them all as part of a humble bundle and gave them to my daughters DRM free because they watched the show and, uh, and, uh, yeah, if I figured they would enjoy those. <sighs> Okay. That, that was a sly uh, uh, advertisement for Humble Bundle, which is awesome. Yeah. I'm just... Uh, that's interesting that you gave your teenage girls the boys. <laughs> well, they, wow. They'd already seen it before I even knew what the hell it was. So, And they watched it with their 30-something-year-old aunt. It's not like I'm the bad guy here. Like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the comics... They go... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show, but it go it just goes a little bit further. It's uh whew, man, it's something. Check out the boys. <laughs> I loved it though, just for the record. <laughs> um I went to see the Lion King, the new version of the Lion King this week. And oh. Uh, the live action Lion King? Well, the <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, the super CG Lion King movie. And you saw this too, right? I did. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, on, on my binary scale of thumbs up, thumbs down, I gave it a thumbs up. Me too. That said, <laughs> oh boy, this movie was really good for my daughter. Well, both two of my daughters that went with me and my niece. They all thoroughly enjoyed it. The two young ones, I don't think had ever actually seen Lion King, the original animated movie. Ster- okay. Sterling had, and she did notice a few changes here and there. There's less singing. You know, there's only two songs, I think, in the whole actual part movie part of it. Mm. Yeah, I, I was going to say there's probably three or four, but I the, the only two are coming <laughs> in my mind right now. So Hakuna Matata. Yep, and uh, can't wait to be king. And in in uh, can you feel the love tonight by Beyonce? But it's a completely yep. different version. Well, it, yeah, it is. It's totally different, and it's not really them singing. It's the it's the voice actors singing, but it's not their characters singing. Right. It's right kind of Be- because Beyonce plays Nala, 
yeah. grown, grown Nala, and yep. she sings that song, mm-hmm. and it's not a duet. Right. Um, some of the words are changed. The rhythm is a little bit different, which actually I thought was an improvement. Um, uh, Just Can't Wait to Be King is more of a mel- mellowed uh, version, and they, they actually try to... Because that part of the movie is like maybe the most unrealistic part of the entire movie on the animated version, because it's the part where all the animals are like, you know, chiming in, doing this and doing that. And they're kind of trying to wrap that into more of a natural feel, given mm-hmm. this universe where animals kind of get along um, down at the watering hole. They're not like running from the lions and shit. Uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting. What got me was, and this is my own damn fault. Ken, do you know how many times I've seen Lion King, the animated movie? Oh, um, probably approaching 100, if not exceeding it. I would call that accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's probably your favorite animated movie of it's, all time. It's up there, for sure. It's my favorite movie of all time. Oh, like, oh well. Like, bar none. And, and Forrest Gump and Castaway coming in, like, rounding out the top five, because I'm not sure what the other two would be in the top five. They, those probably rotate more often. But um, I know the Lion King animated version line for line. Now, I did not know the Aladdin ver- movie, the older version, line for line. So when I watched the new one, I didn't, you know, I knew some of the songs and things like that, but it wasn't like, you know, I didn't know every single line. The Lion King, I know every line. So every time they deviated from the script, I knew it and it flagged it in my damn reptile brain that something was wrong. And I had to <laughs> constantly fight myself about it's not the same movie. It's an adaptation of the movie, not a frame-for-frame reshooting. And that got continuously jacked up by the fact they kept doing frame-for-frame reshootings. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the scenes were like shot for shot. Uh, yeah. And yep. yeah, and it carried a lot of nostalgia and was really, really beautiful. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. The only thing that I have against it is the fact that I am a line for liner on the original. And again, that's my own damn fault. You know, when Scott, yeah. Scott I think the first time it deviated greatly was when uh, the scar line of life's not fair, is it? You see, I, well, I will never be king. And you will never see the light of another day. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> you know, and, and I was like, oh shit. That's like, that's like the first spoken lines of the movie. What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. So for me, there was one glaring thing uh, that stood out for me because okay. I, I also thought the movie was beautiful. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, but one thing that um, I think was sinful is that they left out the um, R- Rafiki. Uh, it's not a stick. Oh, yes. yes. The whole thing with the stick yeah. was not there. But they then did the where Rafiki comes to, you know, convince Simba that, you know, uh, Mufasa is alive and all that was there, but he didn't do the, you know, oh yes, the past can hurt. That that was not there. Yeah. (laughs) Then Later, I mean, it's really... And and, and then he didn't break out the Kung Fu later. He basically just swung his stick around a little bit. Right. Yeah, it wasn't Kung Fu, but he did pull the stick out and he was like, hello, old friend. And then (laughs) proceeded to, to whip some hyena ass. So it was kind of redeemed, but how how are you going to leave out the the? It's not a well, stick. That and the the um, you know him and he knows you, but she wants <laughs> to eat him, and everyone's okay with this. Yeah. Did yeah. I miss something here? Like <laughs> you know that little line with Timon there. Um, I would say that uh, what's his name, Seth, whatever, that played Pumbaa. Yes. Uh, Seth- he was amazing. He had the the perfect voice for Pumbaa. He carried it exceptionally Rogan, well. Yeah. Seth Rogen was great. Seth Rogen, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's my that's my review of the Lion King. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. What happened there? Uh, it's Quentin Tarantino's latest movie. Yes. Um, I have thoughts, a lot of thoughts, but I'm not going to give most of them because they would be spoilers. Uh, <laughs> it, I will it, say it was shot in Hollywood. Well, lots of it was shot in Hollywood. Yeah, I, so I will say that if if you are a diehard Quentin Tarantino fan and you like you just god just fucking love Quentin Tarantino movies, you're going to fucking oh my god love this movie. It is so Tarantino, it's almost painful. Uh he it's almost like he's making a movie that parodies himself but without being like that, you know, uh 
like overly jokey about it. Mm. It's, it's a serious movie, but it's like it's like somebody it's like a tryhard is trying to impress Quentin Tarantino. Gotcha. By and, being very Quentin Tarantino. And he he has announced that this is his last film, right? He's retiring. He said a lot of shit. I don't think it's his last movie. I think he's doing at least one more to round it out at ten. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess because it's, it's like count, spades, right? You can't go nine. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I enjoyed the movie, uh, but like I said, I've got some very spoilery thoughts about uh, where the movie went and some of the things that happened. Um, now, have you seen all nine of his movies now? Of course. I've okay. seen... I, I don't know that there's a Tarantino movie that I've only seen once. Except, except for this one. Once upon a time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. I've... Uh, I've not seen Django. <gasps> I have I tried it a few times and I could never get it to play when I was in Korea. And I was like, well, fuck it. Oh, no. uh, so, I, so obviously I haven't seen The Hateful Eight. Well, Hateful Eight has precisely zero to do with Django. Not even a little bit. Whatever. So... But, Okay. Uh, what what other Tarantino movies are there? There's obviously from Dust Till Dawn. I've seen that. Though, well, that's not a Tarantino movie. But he's uh, in it. So he's in it. He was a producer, and he I think he wrote the script. But it's a it's a Robert Rodriguez movie. He's he's a creepy fucker in that movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But no. So uh, Reservoir Dogs. Seen it. This is for Pulp Fiction. Got it. Um, Multiple times on both of those. Right. Okay. Especially like Pulp Fiction, I've seen probably fifty times. I've seen uh, it in order, in original order, in reverse order. I've seen like every version of that movie that you can have. Oh, I didn't. Even, oh God, yeah. I don't know if I would enjoy that. I I've only seen it like as Tarantino presented it. Oh uh, yeah, you got to at least watch it in order. It, it just makes a totally different story. It's yeah, like, it's like it's like Pulp Fiction Part Two. Weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I've often thought about that, but I didn't. Yeah. Well, you, can't, you can't find it anymore. They've all been taken down. Yeah, so Jackie Brown would be his third one. I haven't seen it. It's pretty good. Um, well, I'm going to say that actually about every Tarantino movie. <laughs> <laughs> Once Upon uh, a Time in Hollywood was, was a movie made for you, is what you're saying. <laughs> it it kind of was. Um, it's, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed it. The movie yeah. is almost three hours long, and I, like, I didn't realize the passing of three hours. I was just... Mm-hmm. A happy boy <laughs> watching yeah. the movie. It was pretty great. Okay, so Jackie... Brad, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are fucking top-notch in this movie, and they're they're really great together, even. so. But, but we're still going down the list of movies. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, Jackie Brown. The fourth one is probably... Um, would that be Death Proof? I don't know. That's something new for No, me. actually, it's probably, it's probably Kill Bill. Uh, so Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2... Like they were presented as two different movies, but Tarantino sees it as one film, right? Um, and then there's uh, then Death Proof would come in there, and then um, uh, Django Unchained. I and think, and we're just looking at director movies, right? Directed by, yeah. So he's done thing like he's he's directed TV shows and, and so, shorts stuff so like that. Reservoir Dwa- Res- <laughs> Reservoir Dwogs, Puffy. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> Pulp With Fiction. <laughs> yeah. Pulp Fiction. Seen that. Uh, Four Rooms is the one you, that you forgot because the, the man from Hollywood. Mm, yeah, but that's not a... That's not a full movie by him. It's an anthology right. of different, well, feature, different directors. But Right. Feature length Tarantino yeah. flicks. Uh, Jackie Brown. Haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. I've seen part of one and <gasps> I just... It, oh my but God. You, you know my aversion of the material from which it is based. Like it's got a very, uh, uh, kung fu. Not even kung fu. It's it, it's it's more cartoony than kung fu. Even I could watch a good cartoon, uh, kung fu movie. It's 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 it, it's the extra level, and it just I don't really like kung fu movies to begin oh, with. Oh, so what you're saying is you don't like Tarantino movies? I I understand now. I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, with Pulp Fiction being an exception. <laughs> uh, actually, uh. Reservoir Dogs would be more the exception than Pulp Fiction. I thought Reservoir Dogs was way better than Pulp Fiction. Okay. Uh, it, it just it just the 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 way that that movie went, the flow that that movie had was just stupid good. Um. Okay. Then you got uh, Sin City, Death, De- Death Proof. Well, Death yep. Proof would be the next actual movie, and then um, in 
Inglorious Bastards. Have you seen that one? I have. It's fucking stupid good. God, that's a good okay. movie. I thought you were gonna say it's fucking stupid. No, like, and, and Brad Pitt. I, a lot of people. Brad Pitt caught a lot of uh, a lot of flack for that movie, and I thought I thought his performance was stupid, brilliant. He got flack. Oh my god, I didn't yeah. even know that he got yeah. flack for that. That's a. Um, that's, I thought he was great. And then you got Django and Hateful, and I haven't seen either one of those. And of course, Once Upon a Time, upon, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just came out, and I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you are a Tarantino fan, I I, I say check it out. It's yeah. uh, it's good. And then once you see it. Hit me up on Twitter or Discord, and we'll have that conversation that I'm not going to have on this show. <laughs> um, always- and if you're a fan of movies in general, you should probably catch in with the Movie Draft Minute. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv, for the week of July 29th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice J. Tell you what, I'm never going fishing with Skrillex again. All day long, you just kept dropping the bass. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Game Night's in last place with $211.7 million. Team The Bond Squad gets $23 million from Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. And fifth place with $385.5 million. Team Have a Drink is in fourth place with $775.5 million. Team Drunk Edge Gaming's in third place with $859.7 million. Team Ritual Misery's in second place with $991.2 million. And in first place with $1,256.9 million, it's Team movie party. That's your stream team movie draft minute. All told is a record as of August 3rd, 2019. Now I was showing on screen some more updated numbers uh, as of I think this afternoon or yesterday afternoon and we are we're less than 2 million away from breaking the billion mark, dude. So actually uh, I've had the the doc open. Um, yeah. Check this out at uh, draft.diamondclub.tv slash stream team for the doc, um, it actually finally freaking updated. We're over a billion dollars, dude. Boom. We are one point. Well, um, I'm not good at the points. It's one billion. Oh wait, yeah, one billion five million one hundred forty-four thousand three hundred five dollars is where we are sitting. Yeah, and we're in a distant second place. <laughs> And I I hate to say it, dude, but there is... A, I mean, we thought we were locked in in second place. The Lion King's already pulled in half a billion dollars. Yeah. Um, like, so, dr- Drunk Kids Gaming <laughs> in third place with $914 million. Yeah. And they're riding on the Lion King right now. Uh, yeah, Lion King's got a half million dollars almost, and it's still going, man. Half this billion, just half a billion quiz. dollars. Or what did I, did I say? Half yeah, a, you said million. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, half a billion dollars. I, yeah. I spent half a million dollars just taking my family to the fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I am. Um, mm. It's th- that might be the neck and neck towards the end of the season because if it just keeps creeping, we might be in trouble. We might be, but Spider Man Far From Home. Is still making us some money. It's at three hundred sixty-five million almost. Uh, it's not going to get us a lot more money, but it is going to. It's going to add cash to the bank. Yeah, I probably finished with. We'll we'll probably finish with like uh, one billion, ten million, twenty million, something like that. Yeah, it's end up. But we're um, in, we're in second DKG place. And we broke a billion. Like that's amazing. Yeah, I, and and DKG is creeping up on a billion, dude. Mm. Like. Three teams go over a billion dollars. That's going to be amazing. And have a drink. Respectably, has seven hundred seventy-five million dollars. Right. People are talking about how movies aren't making money anymore. Like, where the fuck are they getting their mu- their their numbers? Because this is man, a lot of money out there in Hollywood. Um, how much Disney burnout is going to happen with this, though? Because I mean, they've they've had three re-releases this year. Yeah, and people have just set their money on fire. Right. Uh, going to see but, these movies but that can't go on like they're not going to be able to re-release cinderella and and wait didn't know. they they already did that a, 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 a new two, cinderella yeah a live oh, action cinderella. shit like last year or the year before yeah well well hell i did see the advertisement for maleficent too yeah i want to oh. see i want to see snow white remade i with the dwarves and stuff i want to see Male- maleficent too with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Angelina Jolie going at it, like in in fisticuffs, like uh, that. Yeah, 
I haven't seen the trailer. I know basically <sighs> nothing about it other than that did, it, it was announced. Did, did you see Malef- Maleficent? I did not. Oh, see, now you're missing things because that's probably one of the best Disney movies. Uh, definitely top five Disney movies. It's ridiculous. And Maleficent good. is the that's the Sleeping Beauty villain, right? It is. It yeah. is. It's Sleeping Beauty from, but from Maleficent's point of view, and it completely rewrites your, your how you perceive the movie. Of course, I especially mean, especially with An- Angelina Jolie playing Maleficent, it's just she's so good, so ridiculously good. Well, excellent. <sighs> All right. Um, well, if you want more of this uh, and things like that, then uh, keep supporting the show on patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, hell yeah, man. Uh, be like Movie League Mike. He has been a longtime supporter of this show. He's been a patron for almost 30 months now. And I just want to say thank you to him. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's an insider, man. He gets to see all of our uh, pre-show goodness, post-show goodness, exclusive interviews, uh, videos that have uh, been popping up in the Patreon feed over the last several weeks. Yep. Um, and not you, you can get all the same for as little as one dollar per show. And if you, if you, you know, jury rig the 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 Patreon right way, you can get it for one dollar a month. I mean, what are you, what are you, what are you missing out on for? Yeah, you can cap your your pledge at. at whatever amount you want. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. Uh, real quick, man. I want to, I want to sh- throw a shout out to, uh, to, uh, big voice. Jay. He said, uh, the new movie draft minute with the updated numbers is in the discord. He was a little late with it and we didn't catch it, but either way, we appreciate all the work he does for that. And, um, no matter what he did, unless he did it two seconds before we did the show, it wouldn't have been completely up to date, and we needed to show that we were over a billion. Yep. So that's yeah. that's on us, not on him. He's awesome. We suck, <laughs> but we got a billion dollars. Um, hell yeah, man. Billion. And uh, thank you, Jay. You're always great. Um, hey, uh, real quick, uh, I want to tell you that this this episode of the Rich Wizard Podcast is actually sponsored. Yeah, it is sponsored by... Squid's Mixtape. It's a podcast. Oh, yeah. Squid's Mixtape is great. So Squid and Big Voice J talk about music. Yeah, Every uh, episode is a a, a, a specific uh, topic, like, a, you know, the, the 10 best uh, car songs or, um, you know, um, remade love songs or whatever you can think of. They're, they're probably they've either done a show on it or they're probably going to in the future. It's. It's it's excellent. Uh, Squid's great. Jay is great. Uh, the show is fantastic. That's Squid's mixtape. Yeah, go check out Squid's mixtape. It's a podcast. <laughs> it is indeed. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent games. Play with him. This week's game is called Vocabularius. Literally, Nadia has just shown up in the chat room. I'm sure he has plenty of Vocabularius ideas. Uh, yeah, man. So I'm going to test your vocabulary <laughs> and ask you to define a word. Okay. Uh, oh, I got to define the word. I don't, I don't need to know the word from the definition. I have to define the word in, that you're spitting out at me. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to... Well, okay. I'm just going to say the word, and then you tell me what you think it means. And how do I score a point? Does it just have the general spirit of the word or come up with a better definition than the actual definition? Um, we're going to use science to determine correctness. Uh, that's not fun. <laughs> All right. So we're going to find out if Amos can beat the D. <laughs> <laughs> Amos, your first word is bumfuzzle. Bum fuzzle. These aren't even real words. These are real, real, real just, English words that are in the English dictionary. These are just random shits you bro- you fucking made up before the show. <laughs> what does bum fuzzle mean? Bum fuzzle. Uh, bum fuzzle. Can, can I ask what part of speech it is? Um. Yes. Okay. What part of speech is bum fuzzle? Is that a verb or a noun, adjective? Pro, uh, uh, obviously not a pronoun. So as 
as written as bumfuzzle, it is a noun, but it it's more often I would say used as an adjective. So call it uh, uh, bumfuzzled, for example, would be an adjective. Gotcha. Okay, I would say confused. Okay, that's your final answer. That is my final answer. Very good. Um, yeah, confused, perplexed, flustered. I might have an inside line on this because I just watched several videos where a bunch of English actors broke down uh, the the English slang words and what they actually mean. So that was that was one of the things I did this weekend when I was sitting on the shitter. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> um, you so do not want to see my YouTube history. <laughs> literally, Nadia says that Merriam-Webster uh, calls it a verb, and that's um, that's probably true. Like if I bumfuzzle you, like uh, I just bumfuzzle you. That means I confuse you. I got you. Say. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, your second word is guardilu. 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 And what what uh, what type of uh, what what uh, what, what what, 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 I can't even think of the damn word for the word now. Um, yeah, what, 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 what is it? Is it an, is it an, what type I of word? Say, I would say this word is, because I'm not looking at a dictionary entry, I'm, I'm looking at an article that calls these out. Guardy Lou, I think, would be considered an exclamation. An exclamation? Oh. I'm going to go Cardi Lou. I would ask you to use it in a sentence, but you would just yell the word really loud yeah, with the say, microphone. Cardi Lou! <laughs> um, Cardi Lou. I would say Cardi Lou is the dude at the strip club that's always trying to get you to wipe shit down and hand you cologne so you can score with the strippers that obviously all the strippers already know the scent of and they know that you just paid for that so ah. they're not going to get a cut on that money so they're obviously not going to go home with you that night. I'm going to say Guardy Lou is strip club male restroom attendant. Um, I would say... Uh, it's kind of the opposite. <laughs> Literally, Nadia says he gives you the Guardy Lube. <laughs> so Guardy Lou is something that if you were a Scot, you might shout this from the second, third, or fourth story of a building just before you toss your bucket of slop out the window. Gotcha. It's like when I'm on, on a ladder and I throw something down and I see a headache. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I was uh, I was trying to. Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Number three. Teradiddle. 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 Is that when you pee because you got scared? <laughs> I think that'd be that's that's terapiddle. What? Oh, oh teradiddle. Uh, is that when you draw? Because you got scared. I don't know. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> I am not uh, getting the D today. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for you. <laughs> Literally, Nadia says that's what you use the Grant Guardy Lube for. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, teradiddle is um, something that's. Oh, basically, it's something that's a lie or something that's just complete freaking nonsense would be teradiddle. OK, that's so that uh, that speech that the politician read today was nothing but a teradiddle. Got nothing but a teradiddle or nothing but teradiddle. Um, it's an important I, distinction. I see. Well, I see it as a. I, th I think it's a noun. So it, it would be a teradiddle. That speech was a teradiddle. Gotcha. OK. All right. Fine. Um uh, so Ken's game is teradiddle. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, your next word is snickersnee. 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 And this is a. I will. I will tell you. This is a noun. Snickersnee. Uh, is that when? Uh, 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 is that the bend? In a broken, uh, in the bend in the packaging of a broken Snickers bar. The oh, I see what you're saying. Snickers, 
knee. Yeah. Um, is that your final answer? Why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a long, dangerous knife. Yeah, I don't. I, no, no, I like mine better. Okay, <laughs> next. <laughs> All right, your next word is Wittershins. 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 What? What? Uh, what form does this word take? Uh, it is. Uh, is um, it plural form of a noun. I'm guessing. Uh, let's see. I, I guess this would be an adjective. I would say it's an adjective. Or an adverb. It'd be an adverb. So it describes an action. Yes. Wittershins. Yes. I'll even go so far as to say uh, that that truck was going all Wittershins. Or going Wittershins. That truck was going Wittershins. Going to shit? (laughs) <laughs> I had to tow a dude from the dump today. Oh my god! Like literally, I went to the dump to to drop off the recycles, and I had to tow a dude out of there. I think it's hilarious that you uh, that that anecdote sprang to mind when you were talking about taking a shit. It happens. Uh, he was driving a Mercury Sable. They're all pieces of shit. Um, yeah, driving that that um, Sable Wittershins. Uh, he wasn't driving it. That's why I had to tow it. <laughs> I think he'd already gone with his shins. <laughs> right. So winter shins would be a way to describe something that's, that's moving counterclockwise or possibly just going the wrong direction. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I, I mean, it, w- it wasn't going. That was kind of the wrong direction. But <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. What do we got next? Good luck getting the D. Uh, we're halfway through this quiz, and you've gotten one correct. <laughs> I then told you I wasn't getting the D today. The next word is collie wobbles. Collie wobbles. Collie wobbles. Yes, collie wobbles. I would say, can you uh, can use it in the form of a sentence? Uh, mm, uh, before I went on stage to perform my... My speech, I I was experiencing cobby, uh, collie wobbles. Uh, the shit? Um, possibly. Uh, a little more generic than that. Nervousness. Butterflies in the stomach. Uh... There we go. I'm going to give this one to you. I, I'm trying to trying to help you along the finish line here. Uh, yeah, so collie wobbles would be like that, you know, like butterflies in the stomach, like just a like you know, your stomach's anxiety. a little anxiety, kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd say probably brought on by anxiety would be a good uh, a good place. Like to how have Kent it. feels every time I do karaoke, even if he doesn't know <laughs> I'm doing karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong. All right. Uh, your next there's word. A, there's a great disturbance in the force. As if Amos was doing karaoke. I suddenly have collie wobbles. <laughs> <clears throat> Your next word, Amos, is gubbins. 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 Gub- I've actually heard this one before. Oh, wow. Okay. Gubbins. Uh, what type of word is it? It is a noun. Hmm. I'm going to say zeros, like in a, in a game. Oh, mm, okay. Um, like, like some people say you got a big goose egg or right. you got skunked. They, nope. uh, ah, damn it. I rolled gubbins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would buy that, uh, but no. Um, like you could say, I uh, played darts the other night. Everything was all gubbins up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, run with that a little bit. Like what? Keep, keep going with that. Like let, let the word evolve a little bit. Like, uh where, I mean, yeah, you, you go from there to tits. I mean, I don't know. What <laughs> <All right. laughs> I was so, really hoping to get you to spit that beer. <laughs> I was close, dude. So you actually went the opposite direction. Oh, so it was nuts. You said that, uh, because um, 
it, it's something that has no value, little or no value. Oh, so I wasn't necessarily wrong initially, and then I went completely the wrong direction. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, um, fuck you, you and your hints. Describe, you could actually use it to describe a silly person as well, but it usually refers to like some sort of a useless object. Mm, I think that's how I've heard it actually, is a an idiot, like a person that doesn't add anything to the conversation. Fuck govins. Mm. Yeah, all right. So your next one is Bumbershoot. Uh, <laughs> Bumbershoot. Is this what is this what you're using just before you dump your shit over the side when you yell uh uh, uh tear diddle? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th- mm, so this is a noun and it could come in handy in that situation. Uh, you could use both words in the same sentence and it would make sense. Is it toilet paper? Shit tickets. No, it's an umbrella. That's not even fun. No one wants to be using an umbrella when somebody fucking tear diddles. All right. <laughs> so I, I opened my bumper shoot when I heard someone exclaim tear diddles. Oh wow! Yeah, let's see. So if that's what you're doing, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stepping away from all the windows. <laughs> I just think I should post this on Twitter. Actually, I am opening or I opened my bumper shoot. <laughs> think, think of the replies. Okay. Your next word is flibber gibbet. Flibber gibbet. Flibber gibbet. Uh, this would be a commonly told tale. Oh, actually, actually, hold on. I left out a syllable. It's flibber to gibbet. Flibber to gibbet. That didn't change my definition. Okay, okay, continue. <laughs> this is a commonly told tale that is, is believed to be true, but is clearly and obviously false. And that would be a flibber to give it. Yes. I'll, I, I, can, I'll, I'll, I can even provide an example. Okay. Please um, do. Uh, something that is commonly believed to be true, even though it is clearly and obviously false. Uh, Trump is not a racist. Flipper to give it. See exactly. Um, you know what? I'm going to give you half credit for this <laughs> because because a flipper to give it re- is someone who is silly and talks incessantly. I mean, half credit. I really came in with that example, didn't I? <laughs> the example saved you on that. <laughs> that works. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. Um, your final word is snollygoster. Snollygoster. This is a snollygoster is clearly a noun or a verb, I guess. Um, I'm going to say snollygoster is it's a noun, a derogatory term. For a person that can't for 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 the for the glass that people use when they can't muscle up and drink a full pint of beer. Can I get that in a snollygoster? Right. No, it'd be more like ah, he's over there drinking snollygosters. <laughs> uh, Next thing you okay. know, he's going he's going to want his ale cold. This- <laughs> exactly. So this is one that I could actually tie in with the last word, uh, flip. Uh, what is it? Flibber to give it. I don't know. You made it up. Uh, uh, <laughs> so your example, if you would have just repeated your formal former example uh-huh. uh, with this word, I would have given it to you. But since you didn't, uh, Snollygoster is a politician who does or says things for their own personal advance in advancement instead of following their own principles. A snollygoster. That's a repetitious term. Like that's a definition that defines itself. Well, sure. But as soon I mean, as you say politician, all the rest of that is already known. Theory in theory, <laughs> you could have a politician who um, actually follows their principles, has sound morals and principles, and and uh, follows them. Yeah. He'd probably be a very successful politician, but right. <laughs> but a politician. None so I got what two and a half out of ten. 
Yes, that is. Um, you were very, very far from the D on this one. So, yeah, uh, no call. D. No D for me. <laughs> no D for Amos tonight. <clears throat> Okay. Um, hey, uh, so we thought we would spend some time, even though we've already been. <laughs> this show's already an hour long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, this is gonna be a long episode, man. <laughs> we did like a full length episode already. Almost buckle and in, folks. It's gonna be another episode to go. So this is a. This makes up for last week. We yep. are doing all, probably pretty close to a double episode tonight. Uh, literally, Nadia wants to remind me that my D streak is coming to an end. <laughs> Yes. Don't you've, reached the, you've finally reached the end of the D. The end of the D. Okay, uh, so we started a conversation last week post show where we were talking about two weeks. Two two weeks, weeks ago. Well, well, I said post show. Uh, what? You, you shut your damn mouth. You don't know when this is going to come out. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> considering we're like five episodes behind on actually publishing these damn things, whatever. Uh, uh, accurate. Accurate. <laughs> I brought up the idea, well, what what if magically, just auto-magically, some random thing occurred and all of the world wrote you in and I became president, who would I put in my cabinet? Who would be the top people that I would hire into those spots? Mm-hmm. And that evolved into the concept where you and I thought, hey, what if we just built into our own cabinets and talked about those and see where, you know, where our differences and similarities lie? Yeah, so we we made a list of all of the cabinet, the official U.S. cabinet positions, mm-hmm. and we, each of us on our own, mm-hmm. filled who we thought would be good for the role. It could be someone that we know in real life. It could be a celebrity. Um, it could be, um, you know, it could be, it might be a diamond clubber, uh, just someone. And then we're going to talk about why we chose that person for each position. Right. Uh, but this this idea. As fun as this is going to be, it evolved even further to where if, if we're going to appoint cabinet members, that means that we're the president, right? Yep. So we got to become the president. So we had to come up with our five priorities. Top five as, priorities. Right. So if, if elected, these are my top five things. And then mm-hmm. we're going we're gonna to do a little uh, trying to convince you to. Yeah, a little stump speech. Actually, yeah. Yeah, a little 30-second stump speech at the end. Yeah. So I say we go through the cabinet first okay talk about those and this could be like um uh kind of a a precursor a a preview to our presidency yeah (laughs) if we're president uh this is what you can expect from our administration now i i resorted mine to kind of it's in order of ascendancy so if the president dies or whatever and it goes down from there from my list so oh see i didn't even take that into consideration yeah that was one of the things that i that i thought of okay okay I'm down with that. So, um, I, about you, why don't you go ahead and start then, and um, and then when you tell who's going to fulfill that office, then I'll tell you who will fulfill that office for my administration. Okay. Uh, for the vice presidency, I didn't actually have a name in there. This is one of those situations where I couldn't figure out. Ex- I know the type of person I want, but I didn't okay. have a name for it. Um, and. Yeah, well, literally, Nadia is already the department head of international cosmetology, so that's just a known, <laughs> right? Um, which I will, I'll, I'll get to where that comes in a little later. Uh, oh, you too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have one specific uh, uh, secretary, one specific department that I would abolish day one. So. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, and and I would replace that with the uh, international cosmetology. Amazing. Yeah. Because okay. that's, that's got to happen. Um, okay, so so for vice president, I didn't have a name picked out. I would choose someone with contrary views to me on um, some smaller issues, as long as we agreed on... It would have to be someone who agreed with my general thesis of the presidency, but not someone who necessarily agreed with everything that I did, or even was of the same political affiliation that I'm in. Because I consider myself in uh, a... a Liberal, a liberal independent. So I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself Democrat, but I am a more on the liberal side of the middle of the road. Yeah, I would. I would definitely say the same thing about myself, which is like 180 out from where I was. Yeah. years ago for sure, yeah. and maybe even like 10 years ago. So I would. I would probably go with someone. Uh, someone religious, but not like fanatically religious. Mm-hmm. Uh, but someone who does have some strong churchy beliefs. 
um, conservative generally and uh, not too far on that side. But yeah, someone who, who would counteract my opinions and be able to still maintain the, the, the main line of, of media, uh, uh, the median line, I should say. Um, is that, is that what you think? Yes, that's, that's it doesn't matter what you think. My <laughs> vice president would be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Uh, and oh. I, choose, oh, okay. I chose him strictly uh, because he'd be he'd make a great running mate. Because <laughs> this is one that I had left blank uh, yeah. up until uh, after last week's show. Because uh, I I couldn't think because I was t- trying to take it seriously. Now now would it be Dwayne Johnson or the Rock? It would be The Rock. Okay, because uh, Dwayne Johnson's troubling. Is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Let's talk about this on post show. Uh, okay. No, wow. there, oh. There's there's really nothing to talk about. Just look up some of his political views and where he's donated his time and money, and it'll. Oh, for politics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, does, it doesn't. It, it, more as more as the character of The Rock. It, yeah. He's somebody that's going to get a lot of attention. Uh, we know that that media uh, matters, right? So yeah. like, the more attention is paid, the more likely you're you're going to get okay. elected. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. That's so, it for the Rock Secretary Secretary of State. <clears throat> Next okay. in line right. for the presidency after the president pro tempore and the Speaker of the House, but we're not controlling those. Those are already there. Right. So do you want me to? Yes, go- you should go with this one, and then we'll alternate back down. Okay, so I chose Melinda Gates as my Secretary of State. Oh. So uh, Bill Gates' wife Mm -hmm. and co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, Melinda Gates basically runs that organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, She is somebody who uh, appeals to, like, she she will talk to anyone and convince people of the need of certain things. A a strong Secretary of State... Uh, needs to have the qualities that that I think Melinda Gates uh, exemplifies. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, especially in light of the work that she does for uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I think she's got a, you know, a a pure, uh, pure intentions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Good, a good moral character. uh, So that would be a good compass for the office, I think. And then she also has those skills to uh, to reach out to to very uh, diverse uh, 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 what am I trying to say diverse audience diverse uh, you know because she'd have to as Secretary of State she would have to go talk to people from different countries different cultures uh, all sorts of, of different things and I think uh, I think she would be someone that that people from different cultures different religions different backgrounds etc would listen to. And uh, I think she would be very convincing. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, Linda Gates. I chose Lawrence Kent Fuller II. Oh, my God. I know that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you should. Um, there are very few people that I find more willing to make sure every side is heard and to make sure that they all have a proper seat at the table, if you will. And then you combine that with your ability to understand what I actually mean <laughs> versus what you actually said. <laughs> right. Versus the words that came out of my mouth. Uh, you yeah. combine those two together and I think you would make an, an amazing secretary of state from my administration. All right. In, in, interesting. I, I hope I don't let you down. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Hearn just popped in. We are going through our cabinet, Jackie. And uh, in the off chance that uh, too many people make a mistake and write our names on a ballot. Right, right, all right. Okay, so that would be your. So I would be your secretary of state yep. in your cabinet. That's that's interesting. Okay, so uh, secretary secretary of state would be the third. What the you said the third in the line of ascendancy. It's, it's right? actually third. fifth. Well, the president, oh, right. president, uh, president, speaker, president pro tempore, and then state, so fourth. Okay, so yep. who would be next then? Uh, uh, that at would least be be the next cabinet member in line. Secretary of the Treasury. Okay, and who did you choose for Secretary of Treasury? I could not find someone. This office seems so completely rife with responsibility, and I thought, you know, if I was going to have someone, it had to be someone who was 
uh, I, I would want a person who understood economics, but not necessarily a business owner. Oh, Someone who okay. kind of you know understood the theory behind it, not necessarily the the practice, because practice corrupts when it comes to business. Um, so, but I, I couldn't find like a, a an, an economics PhD or somebody like that that had any kind of political history or aspirations. Who'd you find? I chose Warren Buffett. Oh, see, uh, okay. Well, tell us why. I. Th- just simply because I think there's very few people on this planet that understands money more than Warren Buffett. Mm. Uh, and he, he understands money, uh, which allows him to, to invest wisely in companies and makes billionaires off of his recommendations, not, gotcha. not to mention his, his own billions. Right. And it's not because necessarily that, you know, he didn't invent a widget. He didn't, uh, you know, develop some kind of, uh, you know, an, an Amazon or a Disney or something like that. Um, he just makes money off mm. of money and he gets it. So I yeah. thought about choosing him, but unfortunately he has some, well, first of all, I wouldn't want to try to convince Warren Buffett to divest himself <laughs> from his interests. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is so, totally fancy. Yes. Yeah, so, so that would be a rough stretch. And also Warren Buffett has some investments and has made some money on some questionable, uh, some some companies of questionable morals. I'll just say that. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, no doubt. So I I wouldn't want him in line for the presidency. Not that I'm a moral crusader myself, but I could see some conflicts of interest going on there. All right. So who is our next cabinet member that I need to declare for? Your Secretary of Defense. My Secretary of Defense is somebody that uh, is not necessarily famous. Somebody that you may or may not have heard of. Hmm. Uh, it would be Lieutenant General Chris Wegeman, uh, call sign Wedge. He was my wing commander at Spangdalem as Colonel Wegeman. Hmm. And here we are just a few years later. He's a three-star general. Um, he is far and away the greatest leader that I have ever had the privilege to serve under. Uh, I don't tend to give compliments to, to like military commanders all that much because like, yeah, lead effectively. Do your job. You know, right. and if th- those that pulled off, okay, wow, good, you did your job. And then guys that suck, it's like, well, you know, get out of here and make room for the next guy. Right? <laughs> That's kind of how I've been on commanders, right? But but Colonel Wegeman, now three star General Wegeman, uh, was different. He was inspiring. He turned the the uh, morale. Just as an example, he turned the morale of. Uh, Spangdalem Air Base from uh, being completely in the toilet to being uh, uh, making Spangdalem a place that you not only were proud of, but just you like you actually look forward to going to work the next the next day to see what what you could do for the mission. He inspired that in people. Um, Not only that, he's just a really, really nice guy. He's got a good sense of humor. Um, Really great. And not and on top of that, his military experience and his knowledge of of um, tactics and everything like I've seen firsthand some some like tactics that he's developed and things like that that are he's my secretary of defense. He is my number one pick beyond doubt. I would choose Chris Cabo Cabano. Oh, okay. Uh, former it- guest of the show, uh, Diamond Clubber. And a dude that I served with over in uh, Korea. Um, few people I've ever met understand the plight of the enlisted man and understand the responsibilities of the officer and have the point of view that the military should be a powerhouse but shouldn't be an industrial complex per se. And I really think that he would look out for the for all the people equally who are taking that vow to serve the cause and also speak up for them when some bullshit goes down. I don't think he'd be a company man at all. I, yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Cabo a lot better than I do, but from what I know of him, I, I would agree. I think, uh, yeah, I think that that's a pretty solid pick, man. Yeah. I, 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 I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So hard. next, next up would be the attorney general of the United States. And my pick for that would be, uh, congressman for the 33rd district in California, which covers LA, 
Um, well, it's part of LA, part of like Beverly Hills and that whole west side of the valley, uh-huh. uh, which would be uh, Congressman and Colonel USAFR Ted Lieu. Oh, I had the pleasure of meeting him in LA when I was down there with uh, the Infinite Gain stuff, and an incredibly smart dude. He was he's a I believe a first generation, or maybe he was like really young when he moved here from like Vietnam or whatever. Um, well spoken, uh, former U.S. Air, Air Force JAG, uh, just overall great dude. Uh, very very liberal in his views, but he's, you know, a lot of people have problems with what he's done to LA, but I having been there and heard some of the other people talking about the things that he's doing, everything else, I think he's, he's doing pretty awesome. And, um, he really knows his shit. He knows, his, he knows the constitution. He knows, uh, the ins and outs of it. And being a former Jag, he knows how law itself works and how there's different versions of it, depending on who you are. So I would go with Congressman Ted Lieu. Uh, very good. Uh, so somebody that Ted Lou is very familiar with and is a something of a colleague <laughs> of of his. Uh, my attorney general pick would be Kamala Harris, oh. uh, Senator from California. <laughs> I'm sure they've met. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite positive. Um, yeah, I just think she is. Um, it, if she doesn't become president of the United States or vice president of the United States in the next couple of years, I, uh, and I become president of the United States, I think she would make an excellent attorney general. Hmm. I, Fair enough. Experienced enough. She's a strong enough person. I, I, I think she's great. So that's okay. my pick. How about your secretary of the interior? First of all, what the fuck is a secretary of interior? Cause we, we had this discussion when we were talking about it it's before. Like, it's like forests and lakes and shit. <laughs> It's like the National Park Service is part of this, the the Department of the Interior. Yes. Um, yeah. So I was thinking about who who is a, a, a conservationist, who's somebody that's um, you know knows a lot about you know trees and lakes and shit and outdoor stuff. <laughs> and I was so my obvious pick was my childhood friend Grant Crumbaugh. Okay. Uh, he's, he's an Eagle Scout. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, being an outdoorsman from him and his dad. Um, he's he's a consummate outdoorsman. He like he I think he runs a campground today. Like he's, um, yeah. Like I, I think nice. he would be great at the job. And he's just a very passionate soul of a person. And um, yeah, he would he would put his heart into it. I, I guarantee you that. So yep, Grant Crumball is my pick. Nice. Um, I went with Winona Leduc. This, oh. is, this is one of those people that I had to find someone to fit in that spot. Um, okay. She's a Native American by birth and by by history uh, from northern Minnesota. She fights for Native rights and for uh, conservation efforts. And she's basically just a really badass environmentalist woman. Um, and I, I knew that... Um, that she would uh, fill the bill for what I was looking for in this. Cause I, I did want a, a native American or a native Hawaiian, something like that, you know, a native Alaskan, someone with some very deep roots that have been cut very deeply by the, by the white patriarchy that has hit this country over the last 250 years or so. And um, yeah, so she fits the bill as far as I can tell. She didn't have anything that, uh, that I found repulsive. So I would go Next. with Winona, uh, Winona Leduc. Uh, literally, Nadia in the chat says that the Department of the Interior uh, manages feral hogs. I'm sure they do. Uh, with uh, at least 30 to 50 of them, yeah, I would say. 30 to 50 feral hogs uh, running rampant in the yard with only three to five minutes notice. <laughs> yeah, uh, where my children are playing. Yes, always, also, always yeah. where your children are playing. I also want to point out uh, Becky Hearn's uh, nomination for Secretary of Defense would be a box of kittens because come on, who would fight a box of kittens? <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, I like that answer. Okay, and uh, next up would be Secretary of Agriculture, and here I went back to our roots. Okay, I went with Jason Lusk. He is the current Department Head Distinguished Professor of Agricultural Economics at Purdue University. Okay. Purdue University, of course, in West Lafayette, Indiana, mm-hmm. right down the street from where you and I grew up. Right. 
So um, I, I, this is an area I know nothing about. So I went and found an esteemed professor uh, from our local hometown that seems to know his shit. <laughs> so, uh, all right. I, I picked Tommy Chong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if he's not available because he's, you know, didn't show up to the, uh, to the, um, the hearing or whatever, um, I would, I would get, fall back on another hometown, uh, hero of ours, Donnie Fritz. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh. Fritz, I- Pretty sure they know how to grow some shit. So, <laughs> Secretary of Agriculture. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Um, how about commerce? Where are you going to go with that? Um, d- 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 see, mine is in a uh, different order here. Okay. So, Secretary of Commerce. I thought long and hard about this one. Uh, I had to look up what exactly is in the Department of Commerce. And as it turns out, the National Weather Service is part of the Department of Commerce. So I thought, who better to be in charge of that than our very own friend, Mark Jelinek? Oh, nice. Okay. And and why? Oh, why? Because he's he's the greatest weatherman I have ever met. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's got an extensive background in meteorology. Uh-huh. He loves meteorology. And I love his podcast about meteorology. (laughs) 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 And I don't know any other weathermen. Plus, I just I think Mark is a great guy. Uh, So he's my pick. (laughs) Who do you got Um, for commerce? Yeah. Oh, Jackie says uh, he knows which way the wind is blowing. (laughs) So, yeah, that too. (laughs) For this one, I'm going to go with uh, Mark Jelinek because you just convinced me and I didn't have a name otherwise. (laughs) Sounds good. Yep. (laughs) Let's make that happen. Right on. All Sounds right. So awesome. uh, universal pick. Yep. Mark yep. Lining for secretary. We are Trump. on the same page. You have convinced me. <sighs> All right. Uh, what's after commerce? Um, next is Depart- uh, secretary of labor. And I have a pick for this one. This pick for me was just blaringly fucking obvious. Okay. Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe. Oh, dirty jobs guy. Yes. Okay, okay. If anyone fundamentally understands the plight of the working man or woman and the random shit that a lot of people have to do to make a fucking dollar, it's Mike Rowe. He's literally made a career out of experience and sharing those experiences. Like, I can't think of anyone more able to share what we should be doing with labor and how it should be shaped and where labor unions are effective, where they might not be, you know, I mean, you can get into economics here like that, but when it comes down to the, the, just the person of it all, Mike Rowe is my pick. I really love your pick. Uh, that's great. Uh, so my pick, I, the me- methodology I used to choose my secretary of labor was I looked for the, uh, the business that has the greatest, or not the business, but the company that has the greatest um, employee satisfaction rate. Mm. And I, uh, multiple sources indicated this one company that has something like a 93% employee satisfaction rate. Like people love to work for this company. Mm. And it's Hilton, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. So, like the, the hospitality chain or the, yeah. the hotel chain, Hilton. Hilton So I chose the CEO of Hilton, Chris Nassetta, as my labor secretary. Nice. No, that, that he obviously workers happy. That that does that does work. I like that. We we took two different um, two different angles on that, but both came up with a pretty good I think pretty good uh, way of finding figuring that one out. Yeah, All right, yeah. uh, Kent, what is your secretary of health and human services? Health and human services. I chose Keith Richards. Because <laughs> that motherfucker ain't ever that, dying. <laughs> exactly. I want to know his secrets of longevity. Because look at that motherfucker. He looks pretty damn great for 364 years old. <laughs> <laughs> when Ozzy Osbourne wouldn't, wouldn't, do, wouldn't snort a line of ants outside a tour bus, and he did it anyway. 
I I want everybody to to pause this episode and and Google image search Keith Richards and tell me he does not look fabulous for being 367. <laughs> he looks exactly like he did 50 years ago. That's for damn sure. Like he has he may he may have aged pretty quick to when it started with, but he has not aged a dime since then. Um, so who is who is your pick? I went the, the other way around. I went with a, a obstetrician. Dr. Neil Shaw, he's a person that um, I spoke to for an interview with one of the podcasts that I work on with Infinite Gain, and his oh. primary mission in life is making sure that the entire birthing process is um, basically open and shared and to eliminate the, the, the societal differences between white women and black women when it comes to the birthing experience. And I think a person that, that dedicates a lot of their time and energy and their own personal money into a cause like that would be exactly who I would want heading up, uh, checking on hospitals and making sure that uh, everyone is treated fairly and equally. I, I think your pick is way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think Jackie in the chat uh, supports my pick because uh, for Keith Richards, she says that, well, he, he also knows a lot about drugs, uh, what they what they do and, and yeah. all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I would say that's accurate. Um, all right, what, what's next? <sighs> okay, um, next I'm going to go with the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Okay, I think it's your turn to go first on this one. It is, it is. And i got to go uh, sort down through my little list of people here. Peggy Shepard. Peggy Shepard. Tell us about Peggy Shepard. Peggy like Shepard, take- uh, well, I could read you a little blurb I found right here on the old interwebs. Um, but basically she's, uh, uh, a, a huge environmentalist and she's worried about, um, segregation issues and, uh, the best way for children to be raised and brought up and equality, uh, in, in poor environments like, you know, the, the, the slums or the ghetto or whatever. And she's worked really hard to fight that and, um, She's a huge part of NOW, uh, National Organization of Women. Mm, um, okay. Things like that. Uh, she's even gone through, she's gotten awards and stuff like that for, for helping um, improve the environmental health uh, and quality of life for, for colored communities in New York City. So this is someone who's really investigated, uh, interested, and invested in making sure that even the poor, uh, the poorest of Americans are housed and uh, provided for. I like your answer so much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I went kind of the opposite direction with this. Cause I, this was one of the blanks that I had at the end of, uh, last week. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I didn't know what to choose. So I figured out who was the, uh, like the, the top real estate mogul <laughs> in the United States. Uh, and it was, it was Donald Bryn. Um, I'm, I'm, I think he's, I'm going to have to completely disagree with you on this one. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I disagree with myself. I would nominate him and then hope that um, that he was not confirmed by the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. How about your Secretary of Transportation then? Secretary of Transportation. I chose Elon Musk as Secretary of Transportation. I thought about that. I really, really did. Um, he... Uh, I, I don't know if I'd want to put a transportation mogul, which is essentially what he's becoming, in charge of the Department of Transportation where contracts and things like that could... Right. So I I would insist, if if he became my pick, I would insist that he... he divest himself? Forced, yes, he had, would have to 100% divest. Yeah. But I think the man is smart enough and driven enough. He is going to... If, if I set a task in front of him, he is going to Find do a way. It achieve it right yeah there's that plus also our transportation infrastructure uh be it forms of transportation or just the the mode of like you know we're we're talking like road roads and rails and etc uh our our transportation infrastructure is like way way outdated it's and elon musk somebody who he's an innovator um in in a lot of areas but it definitely in transportation uh whether it is uh, you know, trains, cars, uh, rockets, I mean, you name it. Uh, and I just, I think he's got the right, the right 
brain and the right level of interest in it that I think I, I think you'd be fantastic if he, he fully invested. invested. Yeah, yeah, I think he would be absolutely awesome as Secretary of Transportation. I was going in the same route as that. I just couldn't. I, for the same reason, I couldn't put Warren Buffett in charge of the uh, commerce. I, or, uh, uh, Treasury. Treasury, yeah. I, I just I couldn't see that fully happening, and I think it would, it would just be a complete departure. But I didn't put anyth- anyone down because I couldn't find anyone that did fit the bill. But you're exactly – that's exactly who I'm looking at. It's just a matter of I, I just couldn't put, his, put him down. Right, right. So, okay. Now, what's, what's the next department here? Secretary of Energy. And I picked Paul Alivisatos. And you don't know who the fuck Paul Alivisatos is, do you? And I'm guessing you didn't either until you found him somewhere on, on the Googleverse. Right. Yes. Um, <laughs> he is a prize-winning, um, uh, what do you, what, basically he's, he's, he's okay. basically a really smart dude that works at Berkeley. I was going to say compelling argument. Yeah. For yeah, exactly. Ollie. Um, well, it's, it's, it's a matter of there's so much so much going on with this um, the like the, like five of the last six um, uh, people in that position have been like really high up on Berkeley in, in their research development area and okay. this was the next guy in line that was not so old that he would fucking die the day after I hired him yeah, so I'm I'm seeing here that that he's he's involved in nanoscience. That's like his his field of specialty. Yes, yes. Uh, but he's also vice chancellor for research at Berkeley and um, all this other stuff. Like he's he's pretty well known. Like he's got a lot of lot of shit in the chemistry world. So okay. I would I would go with him. He seems like a smart dude that actually wants to make uh, positive changes happen with how we're using our energy. All right, uh, my secretary of energy is Tay Allen. Oh, because, because she's always on. hyped. <laughs> Who has more energy than Tay Allen? Fine. If Paul's not available, I'm, I'm doing Tay Allen as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How about your Secretary of Education? Secretary of Education, Mr. Roman Mars. Ooh. The man is an educator. Yeah. He's compelling. And he is one of the smartest people that I, I don't know him personally, but I feel like I know him because I've listened to so many hours of 99% Invisible and other shows that he's been on. Um, yeah, like if, if, if anybody is going to know how to design the new education system that we need in this country, it's going to be Mr. Roman Mars. Mm. I, yes, anyway. That enough said. If you don't know who Roman Mars is, first of all, shame on you. Second, look him up. I didn't put a name down because I was torn between a type of individual and a certain individual. Okay. The type of individual, I want a middle school teacher that has never or only briefly been a, been a principal, not in a posh area of town, but in a, a school that actually had to have face budget issues and had truancy issues, things like that. So a teacher that really knows the grit of the education system okay. or, or John green or John, or John green. Okay. <laughs> okay. So John green, you went the same direction I went with, uh, with, uh, Roman Mars. Right. Um, he, he, okay. he's, he's just, he's a man of great ideas. He's a man that loves to do his research. He's a writer. He didn't do well in school. So he understands the, the, the troubles of, of being a student, um, yeah. Or John Green. Okay. Yeah. All one right. of, one I, of those two. I'm down with that. All right. What's our next, uh, next secretary here? Secretary of Veterans Affairs. And I couldn't pick one for this either because I want a combat disabled enlisted veteran. And there's so uh, many of those, but basically I just want one with, with, that's got a lot of knowledge that's going through the VA system. Um, that is living that life and having to deal with those issues. Um, and all the ones that I know that are that are fairly famous have either passed away or are stoutly against being political in any way. So uh, that's the type of person I'm looking for, but I didn't actually pick a name. Okay. So uh, I was thinking along the same lines. Uh, I actually picked someone. 
uh, who who pretty much fits the same bill that you're looking for. Although this person has not seen combat, uh, this person is a disabled veteran, uh, somebody that's dealing with uh, VA issues, um, a career enlisted individual, uh, somebody that I think would take very seriously the the task of of administering. Uh, such a monumental department of our government uh, in the veterans affairs. Uh, and that person would be Amos. Hmm. You would be my pick for the secretary of, of the VA. I don't know how g- good a job I would do, but I would fucking make it work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I think you would find a way, dude, you would build your team with, with people that would, uh, you know, f- the, the, your gaps in knowledge and experience, you would fill those those uh, uh, areas with people that do have those. You know, you would find that combat veteran that's that's struggling uh, because of a certain thing, right. uh, certain deficiency in the department, and you would say, "Hey, um, I under- I know that you understand this situation. I'm tasking you to fix it." You know, yeah. and yeah, and then I know you would do that, and I think you do a fantastic job as Secretary of VA. Awesome. Um, who would be your Secretary of Homeland Security? This is the f- the last of the ascendancy spots, by the way. Okay, so my Secretary for Homeland Security would be Bruce Willis. Because, <laughs> come on. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. I get, I mean... <laughs> he, he, Why he, do I pick... Uh, he, he he did say that uh, that uh, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, which is complete <laughs> bullshit. So maybe some questionable decisions in in his life, but but I mean I'm not I can't argue with him because he'll, he'll kick my ass. Exactly. So yeah, Bruce Willis. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there was a a department that I would abolish. Oh, it would be this one. This the the Secretary of Homeland Security would be gone. And I would in- inject that, or inject, uh, inject into that the secretary of um, meteorological meteor meteor uh, cosmo meteorology. Yes, because we need to know uh, more about the aurora. I need to what? know all things weather from here to fucking Jupiter. I want to know all the things. Excellent. Okay. So. Uh, this, Homeland Security is a bunch of bullshit anyway. But that's where I'm at with it. Uh, fucking okay. hate, hate me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. Hey, I mean, that's that's one of the newest departments. It's definitely one of the newest. Uh, it, it is the newest I, secretary spot. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So it's it's only been around since what, 2002, 2004, something like that. Sometime in the Bush. It was right after 9 yeah, 11 when it was G dub. So. Probably 2002, something like that. Okay, so we have several others, and I don't expect these to be, because they're not ascendancy spots, so you don't have to put quite as much, uh, uh, you know, int- like thought into them, I, I don't think. And I'm going to go down uh, in a random order, I think, because I don't think these are anywhere. Uh, administrator of the Small Business Administration. Um, I think it's your, your turn to go first. Oh, uh, Hank Green. Ah, he is okay. he is taking uh, DFTBA records from a YouTube channel that he's doing for, with his brother to ho- to hosting VidCon uh, merchandise sh- uh, uh, distribution, so, uh, benefiting things from local schools to children's shelters to a fucking uh, a forgotten football soccer team in England and like it's. It's this massive, massive movement, and it's really successful. And he's doing it all while dealing with uh, uh, literally gut wrenching pain with a, a, a certain disease that he has. And he's making it all happen. He knows how to get the right people. He knows how to treat people and get this, get the contracts with small companies. And I think he would be a great person to be an advocate for the small business. Excellent answer. I I too chose a YouTube star to be my administrator of small business brian brushwood oh you're not shitting yeah that dude is um he's got a lot of small businesses i mean i think he he wraps it under one llc but he he's he's successfully operating many 
uh, uh, small businesses. I mean, we'll just say that he knows a lot about it. Uh, he knows yep. a hell of a lot more about it than I do, and he's successful at it. Yeah. So, and he's also pretty good at explaining things to people. And plus, I would just it, I would get a kick out of having him around at my cabinet meetings. So I. Brain, brain. Speaking of YouTube people, I told you a while ago in DFTB, D, DFTBA Records, I told you a while ago, I sent you a message uh, that you had to watch a video. And I didn't give you any context at all. Just watch this video. Okay. And there's a video about, um, uh, I can't remember what the fuck they're called. There's these black balls that go on yeah, the LA Reservoir. Huh? Stress ball? No, no. It's, it's, it's actually to reduce um, evaporation. And... Veritasium used 10,000 of these and then on a, on a video to do some experiments, whether you could swim through them and shit like that. And then he sent them out to the patrons and Ritual Misery got number 6,650. 6, oh, all right. So excellent. It's a, it's just a black ball, not quite half filled with water. Okay. So, so if you have any doubts of, of the, the power of DFTBA records, I'm holding some in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Excellent. Okay, cool. What's, what's next? What's after small business? Uh, who is your director of national intelligence? Director of national intelligence. Oh, this is a fun one. Uh-huh. I chose Daniel Shenton. Do you know who Daniel Shenton is? Uh, no. He's the head of the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> I just want to be present for his indoctrinations into all of the programs. I want to be present for his briefings as he gets shown the undeniable fucking truth that he's a goddamn fucking moron. And then he's going to be quickly debriefed and kicked out of the fucking office that I just granted him. Wow. And he's legally bound for the rest of his life to not divulge anything that he learned over the course of the afternoon. So he would have to just become, be, stay a flat earther. <laughs> or whatever. I, I don't know what would happen to him. Wow. I don't care. Um, but I would just be curious to see that happen. Uh, and then I would, I would kick him out and I would quickly assign a person that's actually in the intelligence community that has a clue and uh, can get something done. I chose former acting director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe. Oh, he does need a job. He does. He needs a pension. Um, one, because I think he was robbed of his pension, which we'll find out at the courts agree soon because the, file, the yep. case was just filed. Um, yep, that's what I'm about to say. He also, just... having met him and spent a, a better part of a couple hours with him, the dude is sharp. He knows his shit and he is a genuine patriot and it, it, like um, liberal versus Demo or liberal versus conservative, like the parties, all that kind of stuff doesn't fucking matter. He just wants to make sure that, that the central government is held true and is, is, is culpable for, for anything he's doing wrong. And uh, I thought it was, I thought it was just an amazing person. He's he's the movie version of the FBI agent that you see darting around, remembering like the last fifty three fucking license plates they drove by. Um, he's <laughs> yeah, that can... he, he's that guy. Like he's Jason Bourne without without Matt Damon's face. Um, yeah, it, it, he's he, he was remarkable, and I was highly impressed. And I would hire him to be my DNI easy. Right on, right on. Okay, um, what what what's next? Uh, director of Central Intelligence Agency. Your turn to go first. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Oh, you don't know? Like, okay. Like the, so the one, the one person I have a decent clue about in the fucking national intelligence of anything, I just hired for my uh, director of national intelligence. I don't know who the fuck would be a good spy. All right, so I chose Jessica Walter, who is the voice of um, uh, Mallory Archer. Have you ever watched Archer? Yeah. Yeah, so Archer's mom, Mallory Archer, so the head of, well, it starts out being called ISIS, and then it changes names later. Right. Um, but yeah, so I just think it would be awesome to have the person briefing me on intelligence coming from the voice of Mallory Archer. 
So you don't. I, so, so you don't fucking know either. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you came up but with something how, better than my blank space. <laughs> but how cool would it be? The voice of Mallory Archer telling you about. Uh, well, today over in uh, Saudi Arabia, we learned about the. Oh, w- but Mallory Archer's voice. It, right. Yeah. That would. Um, how about the d- director of the Office of Management and Budget? OMB. I think. I will surprise you with my answer. Oh, yeah? I chose a person that I don't necessarily like, but I know would be detail-oriented and organized enough to get this job done. Because this is management and budget is one of those offices, one of those departments that, oh, my God. Like, I don't even want to – I don't want the briefing. Like, I don't care. Like, I, it needs to be fixed, but I just need somebody to just fucking handle it and don't bore me with it. Mm. Um, I chose CGP Gray. That's amazing. He would hate that job. <laughs> but he would not bullshit you at all. Yeah, and he would be good at it, I think. Yeah, it probably. Uh, but my wow. aversion to the topic of that department and not wanting the briefing would save me from having to listen to him <laughs> also. <laughs> all of your reports would be months late. <laughs> now don't get me wrong i think cgp gray is a great person he just um like i think his heart's good he's not he's I not just, your cup of tea no i would yeah. not like hanging out with him or listening to him <laughs> i i did not pick one for the omb because this is one of the things that just pisses me off so bad i couldn't get around my own hatred and anger would you would you hire cgp gray would you nominate him for this position only to meet him <laughs> like only to be able to make it a tax write off on the government dime to go out to dinner with him and talk about talk to him about the position. Oh well, actually, we'd have to. Yeah, I mean, to nominate him, you'd have to figure out his real name and all of that. Right. So. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, that, that yeah, yeah, that job sucks. Uh, administrator of the environmental a- uh, environmental protection agency, the EPA. Yes, and here I went back to my internet research. Okay. Um. Francis Beinecke. Okay, and who is she? Francis Beinecke, um, former president of the Natural Resources Defense Council, uh, instrumental in igniting global rediscourse and climate change, appointed in 2010 to the National Commission on the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill and offshore drilling platform. Um, okay. she's, uh, she's a writer. She's done a lot of stuff for the environment itself. And I think an environmentalist is exactly who you want. An environmentalist with knowledge of how the industry works with, you know, especially when it comes to uh, the big polluters is exactly who I'd want in that situation because there has to be a line drawn between just going all balls out and getting all the oil and, and energy and atomic and this and everything else and conserving what we have and saving the fucking planet. And I think a really heavy conservative or a conservationist with a knowledge of how the energy industry works would be perfect. Amazing. I really like your answer, but uh, Bert, I want you to go back to that article that you were just showing on, uh, on the uh, little, little Skype stream here. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> if you scroll up to the person that's, that's at the top of this list, it, you will find who I chose as my head of the EPA Gotcha. Um, somebody who's been a hero of mine since I was like five years old. I absolutely adore this woman, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that she's still alive. Um, I love her completely, and I think I first came to know who she was because I loved monkeys and apes, and especially chimpanzees. And the person that has done the most for humans understanding chimpanzees and doing the most for the conservation in in on behalf of chimpanzees is Jane Goodall. Yep. Doctor I, Dr. Jane Goodall. Dr. Jane Goodall. Yeah. Dr. Goodall. Um I I have a lot of respect for this woman. And if she would oblige uh oblige me by accepting uh, the nomination to be my my um administrator of the EPA would be greatly honored. Yeah. Um, beyond the honor of it, I don't think she's, 
She's she's not interested. <laughs> she's a little old. She's already made her her mark. In life. Yeah, I know. She would never accept it. But this no. is again, this is like fantasy booking here. This okay. Is, um, how about U.S. Trade Representative? Trade, trade, trade. Where is that on my list? You oh, had we, to get, we only she, have two left. Um, uh, let's see. What what is? Oh, U.S. Trade Representative. Yep. I chose Richard Harrison who is the owner of the pawn shop from the reality show Pawn Stars. <laughs> he knows how to get a good value from something. <laughs> wow. He's not going to be cheated. He's going to do his best to, to get something for nothing or a yeah. lot for a little. Um, yeah, I would want him on my side in any negotiation. Richard Harrison. <laughs> I chose uh, Warren Buffett. <laughs> okay all right because uh, a, as he would be representing the entire united states he wouldn't necessarily have to div- divest himself from his interests and okay. if there's anyone i feel that could really spark the u.s as a whole and know how that needs to work and how we can get a, a better infrastructure and better uh, trade deals and things like that and how that would all work and how it'd fall out i think warren buffett would be fucking perfect for that okay yeah i i can't argue with that actually that's uh yeah all right Uh, what's next uh the last one uh white house chief of staff oh yes now i uh, i'll let you go first because i really enjoy mine you want me to go first yeah okay um this is someone that i was going to choose as my press secretary uh but then i learned that press secretary is not a cabinet position it is not so could I couldn't choose him for that position, uh, but I'd found some place where he would be as effective, just not as in front of an audience. I chose Samuel L. Jackson. Nice. He would. Motherfucker, get some shit like, done. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why are you missing your deadline, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, that's why I want him to talk to my staff. Um, like now, you know, motherfucker, that the president is going to be pissed the fuck off if you don't have the, you know, uh, Jesus. Like I would, every cabinet meeting would be a delight. Yeah, <laughs> I would. Oh yes, this uh, motherfucker yes, came in three days late on his report, <laughs> and he's going to show up five minutes late for the goddamn meeting. <laughs> exactly. Um, Samuel Jackson. I chose Greg Junior Owens. Oh, Junior. Okay. Yeah, former RMP Diamond. guest, uh, another of my uh, Kunsan buddies. Diamond Clubber. Yep. Um, I if when it comes time to get some shit done and not take any bullshit from me or other people, I think Junior is the perfect fucking fit. And if there's anyone that's going to tell me, nah, dude, you're full of shit. Junior would yep. fucking do it with no holds barred and without, he wouldn't even worry about getting fired. He would just be like, no, nah, you're fucking full of shit. Yeah, I, th- I think that's accurate. He wouldn't even hesitate. He'd no. just be like, no, stop. He would interrupt you. He'd be like, no, <laughs> stop. He'd, he'd pull me off the podium and be like, no, no, dude. Yeah, in the middle of a speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now he, he and I have some differing political views. But I also understand. I also know that he understands the value of loyalty, and it wouldn't be a matter of what what he wanted. It would be he would be willing to push my agenda because he knew that I would take care of his eventually. Right. So yeah, oh, um, not a dick, man. That's uh, that's pretty good. Junior, right. would be, I think. Yep. And now to close it out because we are getting we're getting even longer than I thought we'd go when we said we'd go long. Yeah, it's going to be a double episode. It's going to be a two yeah. hour episode. Yeah. Um, top five priorities. All right. So I think you and I should just take, ter- like, you go, like, whoever goes first mm. goes through their top, their five top priorities, mm. then the other person goes. Okay. I'll, I'll go first since I made you go first for the chief staff. Okay. All right. Top five priorities. And these are not specifically in order, but they are the top five. Okay. Number one, admonishment of the Electoral College. Okay. It's rooted in racism. It needs to go the fuck away. I want to clean up executive orders. 
I want to I want to have I want to have Congress set a timeline in which executive orders either expire or they've become law. So I like that. So I like you issue an executive order. It's got five years. At the end of the five years, if Congress hasn't passed that executive order into law, it is gone. Okay. No renewal. It has to be completely reissued. No automatic anything. The new whoever's president at the time has to literally reissue it as a new executive order. Okay. Yep. It's great. I want to sen- uh, formalize the Senate rules into law. None of this fucking nuclear option bullshit where we're going to go from sixty votes to fifty-one votes just to make it to where this th- th- they can push this bullshit through. I think that the Senate rules uh, should not be uh, a, a watershed based on the populist uh, point of view. I think it should be set in in stone, such as like amendments uh, to the Constitution, things like that, have a defined number of votes, the percentage of, of the Senate and the House that have to go through. I want, I want to make that formal and all these Senate rules that are kind of wishy-washy and change every couple of years because it benefits the party in power. I think that needs to go the fuck away. <clears throat> okay. Um, and same with house rules too. If there are some that I'm just not thinking of, I know the Senate is the basically the house with power, but um, <laughs> yeah, I want to formalize that shit, make it to where, uh, and I'm not, I'm talking like constitutional amendment style formalization, so that you can't just whim it over. It's got to go through the governors and shit like that. Like it's got to go all the way. Okay. Um, I want to mandate a balanced budget and reform tax law. I think tax law is far too complicated. I think there's too many loopholes. I think we've we've kept piling on frosting until the fucking cake no longer holds any weight. Um, everybody and their brother has their own little piece or pie. I want to generalize it to where everyone basically knows exactly what taxes they need to pay. I would love to get rid of in- income tax in- at all and make it to where you're taxed on the on the perceived um, uh, necessity of the item you're purchasing so that luxury items would be taxed a great deal and toilet paper, generic fucking toilet paper would not be taxed at all. Mm-hmm. So you want to get some name brand toilet paper, you got a little bit of tax, you want to buy a yacht and you're paying out the fucking nose in taxes. Um, so it would affect everyone equally because it'd be on what you purchased, not on what you made. And, yeah, that that. Uh, but I've I've spent that a few times. But basically, taxes the whole tax system needs to be completely rewritten, not not chopped up and and no, completely fucking rewritten. And then I would find some way to eliminate Citizens United. I don't think corporations have any business donate any business in donating to politicians, and that would be step one of getting money out of politics completely. Okay. So those would be my top five priorities. And if you noticed, all of them are about government reform. There's no special interest bullshit anywhere in there. It's all government reform. Yeah. All right. So my top five priorities, number one, and and again, these aren't necessarily in order, but that, well, they probably are actually (laughs) Um, now that I'm looking at them. But so my number one priority would be flip the wealth advantage. Uh, And that's everything from, uh, the poorest people are charged the highest interest rates. Mm. Uh, just because you're a fucking millionaire means that you get like interest free credit cards or like point zero zero repeating one percent interest rate on shit. Um, why? 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 You already won the game. Like, why do you just like, oh, here, here's more money just because you were already the winner. Here's more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you're poor and can't afford anything here. Let me make it harder for you. Um, I mean, this goes all the way down to you. You made an example of toilet paper earlier and I'll do the same. Go to the grocery store and price the difference between, you know, the giant fucking 30 pack of toilet paper versus a single roll of toilet paper and look at the unit price. Yep. If I barely have enough to, to, to rub two pennies together, right? Just cause I'm, I've, you know, I've worked three jobs to support my family and uh, I've got just a little bit of money to go to the grocery store, and we really need toilet paper. But I've only got a couple bucks. That's all I've got left. I can't afford the big pack, right? I can afford the one roll. And the unit price, you're paying, like in some cases, like three or four times as much in mm-hmm. unit price. But if I'm rich, I don't have to think about that shit. 
and not even just rich, just like, you know, middle class, firmly middle class. I don't have to think about the price of toilet paper, right? But if I'm really looking at my budget every single week because I just don't know if I'm going to make it, that matters. And anyway, so from from the top level financial shit all the way down to just the bottom barrel shit, shit that most people don't even really notice devastates uh, poor people. Anyway, so long story short, flip the wealth advantage. Uh, number two, free accessible health care for all. This isn't Medicare for all. This is not, this is something else. That's a, it's a different program. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter about the, th- the biggest problem in this country <laughs> is, is the, the inequality, right? The, 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 the richest of the rich have access to goddamn everything. And most of the rest of us have limited access at best. And, and it's a pain in the ass to get it right. Yep. Which leads me right into the next thing, free and accessible education for all. If our needs are taken care of, if we can get an education, we can get a job and we can get health care, et cetera, that's going to, help not just those individuals. This isn't a fucking handout. This is going to help our society Mm -hmm. because the, of all problems come down to this crime. Crime is a thing. Like if I, if I became a burglar, I'm going to break into somebody's fucking house so that I can get money to to fucking pay off my fucking, uh, you know, whatever the hell it comes down to the fact that I was disadvantaged and was not able to fucking make enough money to support my family. That's why I turned to crime. Yep. Right. Uh, uh, crime is inverse, inversely proportionate to education on a yes on a wide I, scale. I am all about finding the root of the problem. I don't want fucking band aids slapped on. A, if if I got a bullet wound, you're not going to put a fucking band aid on it. Mm-hmm. You're going to extract the bullet and perform surgery. Right. That's what I'm doing. I want to perform surgery, not apply band aids. Right. All right. So the Fourth item on my agenda is uh, probably, at least in this environment at this time, um, is a is a hot button issue. Uh, but I'm proposing some common sense gun laws in in the, the the. I want to make purchasing a gun a similar experience to purchasing an automobile. Mm-hmm. You have to uh, get licensed. You have well, you have to receive training, uh, pass a test, get licensed. Uh, pay a fee to get licensed. Uh, you have Very to up it. You have to maintain it. You have to continue to, to renew your license. You have to pay insurance. You have to. I just want to make it the same. Um, all right. So enough on guns. Uh, the fifth thing on my agenda is get rid of fucking stupid shit. <laughs> As examples, daylight saving, pennies, nickels. nickels. Imperial system of measurement. Shit that's fucking dumb. And it's just, well, ah, we're Americans and we, that, we, my whole life we've had these things, so we should continue to fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. If it's fucking dumb, it's out. I'm getting the fuck rid of it. Uh, um, so that's, and, can, and while we're at it, can we just go ahead and formalize the Oxford comma? <laughs> just <laughs> Make it law. Just make it a thing. Stop saying it's optional. It's not fucking optional. It leads to a lot of uh, communication errors. Just put it in there, you I, dumb fucker. I actually have awkward commas in my <laughs> in my sheet here. Um. Anyway, so can I can I go into my because I'm already fired up. Can yeah. I go into into my 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 thirty second stump speech? Yeah. Um. Let's uh let's let's uh uh, uh let me start a, a oh shit I don't have a good timer in front of me. Well, I'm not. I haven't practiced this at all. I'm completely extemporaneous, which is how I approach like all of my briefings and everything that I that's, do at work. That's the funnest part. Okay, and I will buzz you when when you're thirty. I I will treat you like CNN treated the candidates when your thirty seconds is up, which essentially <laughs> says that the thirty seconds doesn't mean anything except people aren't going to hear every other word because I'm going to be interrupting you. Okay, ready? Uh, go. If you are a corporate. CEO, if you are a member of the 1%, if you are a, a multimillionaire, don't vote for me because you're not going to like me. I'm going to tax the shit out of you 
if you are not one of those things, I am your candidate. I am going to work for you. I'm going to fight to uh, to to even the playing field. I am going to fight to to flip the wealth advantage to make you. Can't uh, can't uh, can't lower. Uh, y- y- your time is up. All right. If you're rich, don't you're, even pay you're, attention. You're, to your me. time is up. Everyone else, uh, we we had to move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. All right, sir. Um, oops. I just accidentally. I didn't get that. All right, shut up, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally, accidentally. Siri's not voting for you. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> she heard me say oops, and she responded with, I didn't get that. Um, Let's see. Where is my timer? I'm going to have to. You know what? I'm going to. I'm just going to use my, my clock on my iPhone. Mm. I use the, the stopwatch feature of my iWatch. Oh, yeah. So basically the same app. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's go with this. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Limos, you have, uh, you have 30 seconds on, uh, on the floor. And go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a critical point in our history of this country where we need to just get rid of all the old shit. We need to clear it up. We need to get out of the way. That includes crappy laws, crappy executive orders, the advantage for the people that are sitting in the Senate and where they want to play games. And we need to get back to serving the people of the country, not the companies that the people can barely get a job with. All right. Thank you, That's Mr. It. Thomas. You, you, had, you had five seconds to spare. <laughs> Amazing. Lemos2020.com. <laughs> you have efficiency because <laughs> that's what we need in the government man we need efficiency we don't need this bullshit going on this, right, this sir, blah, blah. Sir, sir, mr limos uh, uh, now uh, now now you're gonna cut me off huh you're gonna cut me uh, off you'll, that, uh, ju- ju- you ju- ju- is this because i'm poor is this because <laughs> i'm not upper class you're trying to cut me off because i can't have a voice oh yeah oh yeah i'm coming for you cnn i'm coming <laughs> for you <laughs> Where can people find more about your platform on the internet? Uh, you can just find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. It's just yep. simple I, that way. I'm RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm either Del Noche or Del Noche 77 everywhere else on the internet. Mm, mm, that's good. And uh, you can find more of this show uh, at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Yeah, uh, please join our conversation in, in Discord at bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Yep, and of course you can find more ways to support the show and all of the episodes at our website, RitualMisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific-ish at DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash RitualMisery. <laughs> I lost the page. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, and thank you for listening for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Extra long political edition. See ya. Oh, jeez. <laughs>